loving God, many of us feel separated from you. For some of us, the separation has been intentional. Like the prodigal son leaving home, some of us have rebelled against your way and decided to go it on our own. But for some of us, God, the separation we feel is accidental. Like the woman's lost coin, we feel bumped out of place by experiences in our life. Or we bumped into the wrong people and ended up going in the wrong way. For some of us, God, the separation is our own fault. We simply went astray. Like sheep from a flock, we drifted away from following you and followed our own appetites to other places. Loving God, we can barely tolerate being separated from you. We need to be where you intend us to be. And so it is, O oh God, that we give thanks that you never stopped looking for us. We're grateful that you've never stopped loving us. As a father looks for a lost son or a shepherd for a lost sheep or a woman for a lost coin, so have you continually searched for us, longing to bring us back into your presence. So thank you, God. Thank you for refusing to stay separated from us. We lift our prayer this evening, O oh God, in the name of the one who placed this prayer upon our lips. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. this evening is from the Hebrew Scriptures, the book of Judges, the seventh chapter. The Lord said to Gideon, the troops with you are too many. Proclaim to the troops, whoever is fearful and trembling may return home. Thus Gideon sifted out 22,000 men and 10,000 remained. Then the Lord said to Gideon, the troops are still too many. Take them down to the water and I will sift them out for you there. So Gideon brought the troops down to the water and the Lord said to Gideon, all those who lap water with their tongues as dogs lap water, you shall put to one side and those who kneel down to drink, putting their hands to their mouths, you shall put to the other side. Then the Lord said to Gideon, with the three hundred who lapped, I will deliver you. Let all the others go home. The Midianites were camped along the valley as thick as locusts, and their camels were without number, as countless as the sand on the seashore. Gideon divided the three hundred men into three companies and put trumpets into the hands of all of them, and empty jars with torches inside the jars. And he said to them, Look at me, and do the same. When I come to the outskirts of the camp, do as I do. When I blow the trumpet, blow your trumpets around the whole camp and shout, For the Lord, 
and forgetting. When they came to the outskirts of the camp, they blew the trumpets and broke the jars, <coughs> holding in their left hands the torches and in their right hands the trumpets to blow. And they cried, For the Lord and for Gideon. Every man stood in his place all around the camp. And all the Midianites cried out and fled. May God bless the reading of the Holy Word. Almost all of us recognize that Gideon is a character from the Old Testament. Um, but most of us really don't know Gideon's story. And it says it's a story that I think has a lot of um, insight into our relationship with God. I wanted to share the story with you this evening. And um, to put it in its proper context, its historical context, we need to realize that um, when, when our people escaped from being slaves in Egypt and they crossed into the wilderness, they followed God in the wilderness for 40 years. And then the people entered the promised land. Now, they are in the promised land for 40 years when this passage of Scripture takes place. 40 years in the wilderness following God, 40 years in the promised land. And while they were in the promised land, things were really going pretty good. Things were kind of all coming up roses uh, for the Hebrew people. But there's a problem when everything is going good. There is a downside to life being great. And the downside to life being great is that we, become, see, we begin seeing ourselves as self-sufficient, as independent, as strong and able to do anything we need to do. And after almost 40 years there in the promised land, the Hebrews, the Israelite people, begin thinking of themselves as pretty good stuff. But about seven years before Gideon's story actually takes place, things are starting to change for the Hebrew people. The Midianites, who are nomadic people, realize that during the harvest time is a great time to swing by the promised land. And so every year about harvest time, the Midianites would come down to where the Hebrews were and they would just help themselves to any of the harvest that was available and they would buy their own, uh, whatever they desired, would trample or destroy any other crops if they wanted to, and then they would move on their way. And the Hebrew people were so frightened from the Midianites that when they knew that the Midianites were nearby, they would leave their homes and they would hide in caves and wait for those marauding Midianites to, um, to leave their area. Now, enter into this scene, Gideon. And Gideon, in our story, is threshing wheat at a wine press. That doesn't ring any alarms for most of us because most of us are not farmers and most of us have never tried to thresh wheat. But in that day and age, the way that a person would thresh wheat is they would, they would gather it all up out in the open in a, in a windy area and they would throw it up into the air and the wind would blow the chaff away and the grain would fall to the ground. Great system. But Gideon is not out there doing that. He's down in a valley hiding by a wine press where there is no wind, where there's very little <coughs> sun, trying to thresh the wheat. Why? Obviously, because he doesn't want the Midianites to see him. And so he's down there trying to get his grain separated from the chaff. And God enters the scene, and God, in God's own humorous, Sacrilegious, just sarcastic way greets him by saying, Hail, O mighty warrior. <laughs> and Gideon lets them know, lets God know, I'm not a mighty warrior, which God already knew. And he says to God, in fact, he said, you know, our people are not even a nation yet. And if we were a nation, we'd be the weakest of the nations. My family is not even a family of any account within our people. And I'm the youngest, weakest member of my family. So don't <laughs> call me a mighty warrior. 
And God's response is, uh, Gideon, I want you to, I want you to call all of the men who can fight to come and to protect us from those of Medea. And so, Gideon is a little nervous about that, so he says to himself, you know, this may not really be God. This may be a figment of my imagination. So he says to God, he says, okay, God, here's a, a, a ball of flax, wool. It's dry. The ground's dry. Here's what I'm going to do, God. I'm going to lay this dry wool on the dry ground. And if in the morning the wool is wet and the ground is dry, then I'll believe it's really God I'm talking to. And the next morning, he looks and the, the, the flax is wet and the ground is dry. And so Gideon said, okay, well, let's, let's try this. Uh, tomorrow night, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay some wool down on the ground like that. They're both dry. And if when I wake up, the, 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 the flax is wet and, and or the, the flax is dry and the ground is wet, then I'm going to know it's you, really. And so the next morning, that's exactly the way it was. And so Gideon has no choice but to call the other warriors. He calls for all the warriors, all the people who are willing to fight from Israel to come and to join him. And 32,000 men come to help fight. Sounds like a good deal, but the Midianites are 135,000 warriors. Pretty outnumbered. And God, who is probably tired of Gideon testing him, decides that God is going to test Gideon. And so God says to Gideon, do this, go to your men and tell them, any of them that are really afraid, uh, to just go on home. And so Gideon, great military leader, says to his, to his soldiers, if any of you are really afraid, why don't you just go on home? And 22,000 of them pack up their stuff and leave. And so he's stuck with now 10,000 people to go up against 135,000. And God says, I think you still got too many people. God says, and this is the strangest thing, test I think God's ever given to people. God says, tell your men to all go down by the water and get something to drink. But when they go down there, I want you to watch your men and see how they take the drink. Because he said, some of the men are going to reach down with their hands and take water and put it up to their mouth. Some of the men are going to get on their hands and knees and try to lap up the water like dogs lap up water. 10,000 men go down and only 300, <laughs> not real bright guys, get down on their hands and knees and try to drink the water with their tongues. And God says, that's my army. <laughs> and so he has Gideon take those 300 men and he says, okay, we're going to go into battle now. And you can almost see Gideon's mind trying to work, okay, we're going to need ourselves some, uh, some swords or we're going to need some clubs or we're going to need this. And God says, Here's, here are the weapons I want you to use. Give every man a trumpet. Give every man a torch. And each of them get a jar. <coughs> and God has each of them put the torch lit in a jar. And they've got the torch lit in a jar in their left hand, and they've got their trumpet in their right hand. And he has those 300 men surround the Medianites. And at the time that he is ordered, he has them all blow their trumpets. It's right after midnight. They blow their trumpets, and then they smash the jars, which allows the enemy to see their torches. And the sound of the trumpets and the sound of the busting jars, and now the light of the torches scares the bejeebers out of the enemy, and they all tuck tail and run. That's a pretty good story. And I'm sure this story's gotten embellished a little bit over the years. <laughs> but what hasn't, I think, been embellished over the years is that this is the way God works. This is God's MO. God always chooses unlikely people.
God calls Gideon, a farmer, to become a soldier. God calls Peter to be a fisherman. God calls people that are not equipped for what they're called to do. And the people that God calls are always confused and always wonder why God calls them. Abraham had the question, how can I father a nation if I can't even father a son? And Moses, how can I convince Pharaoh when my own family can't understand my words? And Mary, how can I give birth to a Messiah when I'm a virgin? That's how God works. That's God's MO. God doesn't call those who are equipped. God calls those who are available. God calls people who will take direction, not who will take credit. And I think the most beautiful part of this whole story is that after, after the, the battle that never happened is, is won, the people of Israel ask Gideon to be their ruler. They say, we want you to be our ruler. We want your son and your grandson to rule when you're gone. And Gideon's response, we are not your rulers. God is your ruler. He didn't want the credit. The credit went to God. Now, you know there's a phrase we always we hear a lot about, always be kind, everybody's fighting a hard battle. Kind of playing off of that a little bit. Um, I don't know what battles different people in this room are fighting. And they're most of them not battles probably, but it's, it's, it's burdens, it's, it's uh, difficult times. Uh, they may be emotional burdens or medical burdens or whatever. But we all are facing things that are difficult. What we get from this story is that even if we feel unequipped, even if we feel that we are not in a position to, to take on whatever stands before us or in our way, that God is with us. And, and God is saying, even if you think that you're taking a knife to a gunfight, put down your knife. Pick up your trumpet, your torches, and your jars. You don't need the weapons. You don't need to fight. All you need to do is to move forward in my presence. You're going to be all right. That's the comfort we get from this story. That's the way God's always worked. And that's the way God still works. We can put down our weapons and we can approach our problems grab our trumpets, our torches, and our jars. We're going to be all right. Let us pray. Stand by us, O oh God. Stand by us every step of the way. If we're fighting addictions or afflictions, stand by us. If we're fighting our doubts, stand by us. If we're struggling financially, if we're study, struggling with our relationships, stand by us. Stand by us, O oh God. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. And now may the Lord be with you. And with you also. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. We give you peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Bye.